If you want a large, posh, seven-seat SUV, a Range Rover is the obvious choice. It's properly luxurious. It offers loads of room, and there's a wide choice of engines, from diesels to plug-in hybrids. But, and there is a big but, it's expensive, like at least 100,000 pounds expensive. So what are your other choices? Well, here we have two options. On one hand, we have the BMW X7. It's every bit as imposing and posh as the Range Rover, and every bit as big, but it's also around 20,000 pounds cheaper than an equivalent Range Rover, as long as you stay away from the options list. And on the other hand, we have something that shares more than a little bit of DNA with the Rangey. It's a Land Rover Discovery. Don't go thinking this is a poor relation to the aristocratic Range Rover either. Even though the Discovery started out as a utilitarian family car back in the late 80s, it's moved consistently up market over the years and it's now a properly premium proposition. And the Land Rover Discovery is even cheaper than the X7. It starts at £56,000 and this mid-spec R-Dynamic SE is £65,000 and this particular model with a few of the options ticked is £72,000. And do you reckon it looks noticeably less upmarket than the X7? We don't. Your neighbours will never know that you've saved around £15,000 by not buying the BMW. With big SUVs, boot space and flexibility is of course crucial and both of these deliver that. The Discovery no longer has a split folding rear tailgate, but there is a handy extension to the boot floor so you can change muddy shoes or sort out kids' coats. The X7, meanwhile, has a boot lid set up that's much closer to the Range Rovers with a traditional split fold tailgate. Both cars have all electric boot lids, but with the X7, there's a button back here to lock the whole car too, which is a useful touch. With all seven seats in position, there's a little bit more space in the X7 than there is in the Discovery. But that's understandable when you consider the X7 is about 20 centimetres longer than the Discovery. That space-saving advantage continues when you start to fold the seats down too, but then both cars have the sort of boot space that's up there with the best estates in five-seat configuration and can pretty much compete with commercial vans with all seats down. Third row passengers get a pretty good deal in the X7. There is a decent amount of leg, head and shoulder room, even for taller adults. I'm five foot four and a half and I feel like I have loads of room. Plus, there are cup holders, your own sunroof, and even your own climate control back here. Oddly enough, despite the Discovery being quite a bit smaller than the X7, there is still just about enough space back here for third row passengers. You can feel a little bit cramped on the shoulder room and there's slightly less headroom, but it's still pretty good. But it is a little less luxurious. For instance, you do get cup holders, but there's no climate control back here. In the middle row of the Discovery, there is plenty of room to sit three abreast. There's plenty of headroom. The only problem is that you don't get as much leg room as you get in the X7. You'll also note that there's no climate controls here either, which is not the case with the X7. In fact, the BMW feels a touch more upmarket, especially with the heated electrically adjustable seats and the very comfy headrest cushion. It should be said though, that some of the extra gadgets in the X7 do come as part of the ultimate pack, which costs a whopping 16,000 pounds. This includes the panoramic glass roof, massaging front seats, the five zone climate control we mentioned earlier, and a fancy Boas and Wilkins sound system. Up front, the BMW isn't exactly minimalist. There are loads of buttons, but once you work out what they do and where they are, it's actually very logically laid out. And thankfully, the controls are controlled via this rotary iDrive controller as well as the touchscreen. The X7's cabin is also full of thoughtful touches, such as heating elements in the armrests, plus cooling and heating functions for the cup holders. That's not to say that the Land Rover Discovery's cabin isn't short of clever touches too. There's this secret compartment here, which is really useful for storing your phone, wallet, or possibly a banana. Where the Discovery can't quite match the BMW is in its build quality. There's just this sense that the leather isn't quite as fine and the plastics are that little bit more flimsy. The Discovery also differs from the BMW in terms of its minimalist cabin design. There are far fewer buttons in here, which means the touchscreen has to do much more work. Fortunately for Land Rover, the company's latest Pivi Pro setup is genuinely excellent. It uses a similar tile-based system to the X7 and is every bit as easy to use, responsive and intuitive as BMW's iDrive. For a company that sells a fraction of the cars of BMW and with a much smaller development budget, that really is quite an achievement.
BMW is famed for making cars that are fun to drive and with the 5.2 meter long two and a half ton X7 it certainly has had its work cut out and fortunately for BMW X7 buyers it's done a pretty good job the steering is responsive it changes direction well and there's plenty of grip however you can't get away from the fact that it is a heavy, big car, and you do feel it. It is impressively quick though. This model comes with a 380 horsepower, three liter turbocharged six cylinder petrol engine, and it means it can get from zero to 60 in just 5.8 seconds. Really though, acceleration test and country road blast are not exactly what this car is designed to do. It's more about being a good long distance cruiser and it does that with its quiet cabin and smooth unruffled ride. And the official fuel economy figure of 29 miles per gallon is pretty good for a car this size. In town, the X7's quick acting steering and sheer bulk can make it a bit of a handful on narrow streets or busy car parks. Fortunately, all UK X7s get a full suite of cameras and sensors to help minimise the hassle of parking. In the Discovery, you immediately feel that Land Rover is going for a different feel with this car. The seats are firmer, the steering wheel's bigger and the view is better. It's definitely a more utilitarian feel than the X7. That's true to a certain extent. The Discovery leans a bit more in the corners and the lower geared steering makes it a bit less eager to change direction than the X7. But its slightly smaller dimensions actually make it feel more manageable on UK roads. This car has a six cylinder, 300 horsepower turbocharged diesel, as opposed to the straight six petrol in the BMW X7. And the low end grunt definitely suits a large SUV. That said, you can get a petrol discovery and a diesel x7 that diesel x7 would be a little more economical than this car's official 33 miles per gallon bmw says its diesel x7 can achieve 37 miles per gallon one area where the disco may well comprehensively outclass the bmw is off-road as with most land rovers the discovery really will go almost anywhere and although that's an ability you'll almost certainly never truly put to the test it's good to know the car can tackle properly rough terrain if called upon. In summary then, the Discovery is cheaper, very nearly as spacious, almost as good to drive and more practical on UK roads. So aside from the BMW offering a more luxurious feeling and being marginally better to drive, it's an easy win for the Disco, right? So what do you think is the best bargain Range Rover alternative? Let us know in the comments below. And if you're considering buying a BMW X7, Land Rover Discovery, or indeed any SUV, head to cargurus.co.uk to find loads of great cars for sale from top rated dealers. And with our super clever pricing technology, we'll even tell you whether it's a good deal or not.